she did some movies in the in the late nineties and early two thousands uh, for Disney, the the princess something like that. There was yeah, um, I, I never saw them. But it's time to do another live stream and do another video series on moms in history. That's right. Um, and here's the thing. The thing is, uh, I chose in my last videos two American women who are important in American history. So I thought I'd choose two women who were important in world history and also hist the history of, of like a, a First Nations indigenous peoples history that doesn't get looked at. Not really. Not really. Not respected. And so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to take a look at two people. And why don't we just go and get started? It is the end of Mom Appreciation Month. Yeah. And it's, it's, it is literally the last day. <laughs> the last day for me to live stream this. I'm going to try to upload one of the videos, edit the videos later tonight. The first person we're going to talk about today should be someone everyone knows. Yeah, Julie Andrews. And why, and <laughs> of all the people I could have picked, you know, why did I pick Julie Andrews? Uh, you may know her as Mary Poppins. Okay, you may know her as Mary Poppins, but probably you know her from her most famous role, which was The Sound of Music. Okay, The Sound of Music, Julie Andrews. And she was in a lot of other projects too. And she did a lot, a lot, a lot of volunteer and humanitarian work. And that's, which, which is great. Uh, she did some movies in the, in the late 90s and early 2000s uh, for Disney, the, the princess, something like that. There was, yeah, um, I, did, I never saw them. Uh, so she kind of had a, a, a second career, a second uh, renewal to her, to her career, acting career. But what about, what was she like as a mom? <laughs> what was she like as a mom? Um, she, was, she was considered so important that in her native England, where she's from, she's British, uh, for her work and her humanitarian work, as, her, as well as her acting work, uh, that she was knighted by Queen Elizabeth. She was knighted, but not like a, like a knight with a sword. Um, when women are knighted, um, they're called dame. So she's technically Dame Julie Andrews. Um, <coughs> But what, but what was she like as a, as, a, as a mom? Well, a couple of things I learned is uh, she wrote children's books. <laughs> yeah, she wrote children's books and she um, would go and, and do readings uh, to kids. And not like book readings, like, you know, where you have a book signing and they do a big one. No, 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 no. She, she would... There would be like a story hour, storytelling time at the library or bookstore, and she'd just read the books. Not like, you know, a, a piece of a, of, her, of a book to kind of give you a sense of the book and then answer audience questions. No, 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 it's story time. She, told, she would tell stories, and she wrote these children's books. And, and a quote that I have about her from one of her daughters is, is this. So let's see. Um, there was, a, I guess there was an interview um, and she described her mom, her, this is her daughter, describing uh, Julie Andrews, Dame Julie Andrews, uh, that she was, so she was very strict, very strict, um, and very busy. Uh, but even when she was very, even though she was very busy, and this is her quote, she was very hands-on, always there and making eggs at five o'clock in the morning before we went to school. That's pretty great. I'm not gonna lie. I think that's pretty great. Um, yeah, doing a mom like busy acting career, busy humanitarian work, writing children's books, and, and through and through it all, getting up, getting up in the morning, making breakfast for the family. 
Yep. And seeing the kids after school. And then, oh, hey, she went to her other life. <laughs> and that, that is Julie Andrews, who I think is a great mom. The next mom I want to talk about is someone I was very surprised. I didn't know anything about this person at all. Th this is such a, this is a completely new reference to me. And, that, and that's really sad. And I'm going to fix that right now. I'm going to talk about Wilma Mankiller. Great mom in history. Is she? Is she? I think so. Uh, and why do I why do I think so? Well, okay. Um, again, we're talking about history here. American history has always been a, a very you say volatile time. Volatile. That's a big adjective to describe things that change a lot, um, good and bad, up and down. Sometimes happening at the same time. You know, a lot of changes happening at the same time. We call that volatile. Um, and Wilma Mankiller, what a name, right? Wilma, you think, yeah, that's like a name, like a, like an older person's name. That That's a whole older generation of women named Edna, Edith, Wilma. And then the family name, Mankiller. That's pretty aggressive. What turns out, that Wilma Mankiller, she grew up in a time when women's rights, and at the same time, civil rights, race rights, um, was under serious change, dramatic revolution. And when she was very young, she, she got married, she started a family, and she did what every mom was expected to do, which was take care of the house while the man, her husband, uh, earned the income. And this was in the, uh, the 60s, 1960s. But a very important element to understand this is Wilma is a native person. She is an, an, an indigenous person of America. And at this time in history was not a good time for indigenous peoples. It was, it was a very bad time politically, economically, socially. There were a lot of problems. And so being a woman and being a young mother and no income, no education, it was not a good place to be. So what's interesting is she did something about it. <laughs> and what she did against the wishes of her family, her husband, her community, she went back to college. She went to college. And in fact, she kind of went to college very far away from her home. Um, she went to college in California, actually where I grew up in San Francisco, the Bay Area. Uh, and she got a degree. And then she wanted to get more education later on. And when she came back, uh, she, she got a degree and she became certified as a social worker. And what she wanted to do was work within the government parameters, the government um, uh, social security system to help people who needed help. Uh, either economically or like food resource, energy resource, and also rights. And in this time when she was a social worker for indigenous peoples, First Nations people, um, she was also uh, doing activist work, women's activism, trying to improve the conditions for women, particularly with women's health care, that was her focus. Um, we did a similar uh, person, uh, Sojourner Truth, and um, Ann Jarvis was the one who, um, she uh, was an advocate for women's suffrage and women's rights, but her primary focus was uh, maternity leave and uh, uh, care for mothers. Well, Wilma Mankiller did the same thing. So that what that tells me is 
the conditions for working women didn't improve very much between the two women, unfortunately. And maybe it did improve for white women or women with a higher income status, but absolutely not for indigenous women, First Nations women. So here we have Wilma Mankiller trying to fix that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that what you, you want your daughters to grow up to say, hey, we've got a problem in our, in our society and we want to, we're going to fix that. You should be proud of them. Or on the other hand, maybe if you can fix it so that your daughters don't have to be concerned about that. And that's exactly what Wilma Van Killer did. So what? What makes her different than any other person in, of the 60s and 70s? Well, um, because of her work and because of all of the efforts she did to improve the situations for her community, she became the first female chief of her tribe. What does that mean? It's a little bit like being the president of a country or the governor of a state or the mayor of a town. In America, we have what are called um, First Nations people, uh, your indigenous peoples, which are all over the world, but America has ours. We have ours as well. And they are uh, organized by groups we call tribes. And each tribe has a leader, mayor, governor, president. But here they're called chiefs. And her tribe selected her to be the first female chief of her tribe which I thought was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. So, geez, role model already, but what was she like as a mom? We're talking about moms in history. What was she, uh, was she, you know, she was a great woman. Yeah, okay, but, but what was she like as a mom? So I have uh, an interview from one of her children. She had three children. And here's a quote from <clears throat> one, of our, one of our daughters. Uh, Even though we grew up with little or no money, we knew we were the richest people on earth because we had each other. Right? Amazing. Mom taught us how to laugh, how to dance, how to appreciate Motown music. <laughs> cool. Uh, to be humble servants to our people to love one another unequivocally and to cherish each and every moment. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Be a humble servant of the people. Right. But also uh, to appreciate, you know, Motown, Motown. <laughs> I love it. I love it. A, a Native American woman who grew up and was active and, and a participant in one of the most um, changing times, of the, the revolutionary times in America's history. She had a very important role in it. And, and she, you know, she left her reservation to get an education, which was a big no-no for her people at the time. Came back and said, yeah, yeah, you're mad at me, but you're not, but I'm going to help you anyway. Also, kids, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about it. Detroit music, um, Otis Redding, et cetera, et cetera. What a cool mom. Best mom, best mom of the list. Ah, ooh, ooh, big list that I have here. Sojourner Truth, Anne and her daughter Anna, Jarvis, Julie Andrews. Everybody wanted Julie Andrews to be their mom. And Wilma Mankiller. I don't know. It's a pretty big list. So thank you, Wilma. And uh, you're a great mom. Now, that will be the end of our Mom Appreciation Month. But that's just for this month. Please appreciate your mom tomorrow.